Okay, so the um, the goals that we have for this week are that we're going to talk about a few uh, more advanced things about products, such as variable products, coupons, and then menus. Let's do menus first. This one is, uh, is a pretty useful one. If you view your site, it automatically gave us home, cart, checkout, my account, sample, shop, etc. It automatically gave us some sort of menu at the top here. But maybe I want to change that menu. I want to add to it. I want to put things in a sub menu and that sort of thing. So let's cover uh, organizing menus for a moment and then we'll cover using categories in our menu. If you go back to the dashboard, under appearance, menus, we have this whole section here. Let's go to appearance menus. Scrolling down, um, in my case, I don't have any menu structure set up that says give your menu a name, then click create. Well, the thing about menus in WordPress that's great is that you can have multiple different menus that you can turn on and off. So let's say through most of the year, I'm going to have a certain um, structure because I'm selling certain things. But then during some of the holidays, my menu is going to change to show different things that I've got for sale. So I can have different menus that exist in order to swap them out easily. So from this spot right here, under menu name, let's call this main menu and click create. So I've got one menu. Um, that I can apply to my site. And this is what uh, people forget all the time when they first work with WordPress or, or don't change their menus very often. Uh, you have to then remember to tell WordPress where should this menu exist. And it's right here under display location. In my particular theme, if you're using the default storefront theme, we have uh, three possibilities. Primary, secondary, secondary and handheld. So. Um, depending on your theme, you may have one or five different spots where a menu could appear in your design. Unfortunately, they don't really explain themselves where, very well. Where is that actually going to appear? Is it at the top? Is it at the left? I, I don't quite know. I can sort of deduce that the primary menu is going to appear somewhere uh, near the top, like we've already seen it, somewhere up here. So then where would the secondary menu go? I, I don't quite know. And sometimes it's just a, a matter of uh, exploring or process of elimination. What if I add my menu to both, and then I save it, and then I view it, and then I figure out, oh, okay, in this theme, secondary menu is going to be on the left side. And then handheld menu. So what do you think that means, handheld menu? Yeah, phones and tablets. Phones and tablets on a smaller device, et cetera, et cetera yeah. So I might have a different menu that appears when my site loads up on someone's mobile device, phone, tablet, etc. Usually you want it to be the same, but sometimes I see that a website has a different kind of menu when you're on mobile, like different deals to entice people to visit your site on a mobile rather than a desktop. But the point is, don't forget to activate somewhere to put your menu. And usually when I teach this, I, I have us create the name of the menu, set it where we want it, and then save it. Even though there's nothing in the menu yet, I want to do that so that I don't forget to activate it. Because people make an amazing menu, then they go visit site, and the menu's not there. Because they forgot to turn it on down here, actually display it. So out of curiosity, um, on the left side over here, we've got pages. Let's put some pages into our menu, or let's put some posts, blog posts, custom links, categories, which is not exactly the categories that I'm talking about, and WooCommerce endpoints. Okay, pages. Most recent, view all, search. If you've got a lot of pages, you may have to search for your particular page to add to your menu. View all will list them all, and most recent are the most recent. Switch over to view all, and I want to add the home menu and the shop. I mean the home screen or the home link and the shop link for the moment. I want to add home, I want to add shop, and then click add to menu. So go ahead and do that, home, shop, add to menu, 
then save menu and then visit your site. So after you add those two, visit the site and see what that looks like. Okay, so once you've added a couple of items to your menu, remember to save it. And when you view it, you will see up at the top, now I've got a couple of buttons there, so home and shop. Um, the, the, the thing about the menu then is when you've got, let's say I want sub-menu items. You, you might visit a website that you hover your mouse over a button, and then it drops down to give you more options. We can do that pretty easily here in WordPress. So let's say for shop, I also want to add my account. So if I add my account, but then I want to indent it, if I drag it over like this, you see here you can drag it, it's on the left side, it's on the right side. When it's indented like that, that means that when you hover over something like shop, it will then drop down to um, have a sub-menu item. Just saving that and taking a quick preview of it, it'll look like this. It automatically, depending on the theme, it makes a little arrow to show that there's something else there. And then when you hover over, it pops up to show I've also got my account. So these, uh, these menus can have a very easy arrangement. You can also say, well, I want my account to, be, to appear first. The only problem is you just have to be careful because even though this looks like it says, my menu shows home, then my account, then shop, actually it's home, then shop, because my account is inside of home. So you just have to be careful that they're not indented. If you do want it as a sub-menu item, it has to indent. Let's say I wanted to add a, a link. Um, I want to add maybe social media links. This one's kind of advanced. I don't have any page called social media. But in my menu, I want there to be a button that says social media. And when I hover my mouse over it, I want it to show a link to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Etsy, whatever. So to set ourselves up here, we have a custom link. If you look here, it says put the name of whatever website you want, give it a name, and then add it. OK, so I'm, I'm going to do that. Let's say uh, twitter.com slash anything you want, if you've got a Twitter, or if not, uh, PMD interactive so I'm just putting an address and I'll say the link text will be visit our Twitter or anything we want it to say we can just make it say Twitter we can make it say visit our Twitter so let's try this put in whatever under custom link put in whatever address to whatever network plus a name and add it So now I have a menu item there. Do another one, let's say maybe YouTube. Visit our YouTube. So we can have menu items that are internal 
as well as external. Internal are links that go from one screen to another of our own site. I'm on the home screen, I go to the shop screen, I go to the contact screen, whatever, those are internal. And then external links are links that go outside of my site. So Twitter or YouTube, for example. Whenever I make any changes, remember to save. And then when I visit the site, I have a button that says visit Twitter, visit YouTube. I want to fix a couple of things. I'll be there one moment. One is that I, when I click, I want it to open in its own window, maybe. I don't, I don't want people to go to that other site and then close it. Hello, this is Victor Campbell. Site. You often have it that when you visit someone else's site, when you have an external link, it opens in a separate window or a separate tab so that when the person is finished looking at Twitter and they close that window of Twitter, they don't lose your site. So, you know, that would lose my site. So we'll, uh, we'll see how to add that. But let's go ahead and add a couple of those custom links and then we'll see how to do that. Well, that mean, so at, uh, well, you have, you have oh. So there's a couple of things I want to do for polish. One is that I want them to open in their own window. And two is that I want them both in one submenu. I don't want a separate link. I want both of them in one social media menu that drops down, then I can click. Because maybe I want to add three more social networks. I want five networks. But I'm not going to put five links up there. It will be cluttered. I want one social link which opens up to then show the five. So we'll do both of those. The first one to open in an external window is like this. Um, do you notice that next to all of these uh, menu items, we have a little arrow. If you open up the little arrow, you have various options next to each one. So for example, on Twitter, if I open that up, it shows uh, if I misspell the name of my link, I can fix it. If I want the navigation label, if I want the text to appear some something else, I can change it. I can move it up or down, which is the same as if I'm dragging it up or down. You can just press a button up or down. And I can also remove it if I actually don't want it in my menu anymore. Well, there is also an option here to um, make it open in its own window. Do you see it? No. Nope, trick question, it's hidden. <laughs> But you can activate it right over here. At the very top of your screen, you have screen options. WordPress is very powerful, very complex software. So it does not show you every menu, every option all the time. So let's go here. Under your menu, screen options, you have all of these things. Show me the place where I can add my products. So there was not a way to add a product to the menu until you turn it on. We also have product categories, which we'll get back to. But more importantly, link target. If you turn on the check mark there, show advanced menu properties, link target. Now when you scroll back down, there it is. Open link in a new tab. So once you turn that on, wherever you need it, it doesn't turn on for all of them, of course. But for the ones that you want it to open on its own tab, turn those on. So the big difference with that is um, once I've got it, so I've got it like this, I'm previewing it, I click on visit Twitter, you see a new tab opened up on the web browser. When the person's done with that tab, they're still on my site.
without that uh, little check mark, they visit that site and then they're, they're finished looking at that site and they close it and it's gone. Probably don't want that. You want it to open in its own tab. And that option there is hidden screen options. Okay, the second thing about it appearing in a sub menu, this one's a, this is interesting here. Um, if we if we notice here, my account is a sub item of shop. So something's got to be underneath something above. It's a sub item. So we can create a sort of temporary empty menu item that doesn't actually go anywhere calling it social media if you delete that it's not going to go anywhere we can create a custom link called social media that doesn't go anywhere but we can use that as the parent element to put these two into it so I'm creating a new custom link called social media, and then I add it. Uh, I guess it wants the HTTP part, but with nothing. Uh, I guess we want the pound sign, actually. Yeah, that'll work. So put the pound sign, and then social media. Yeah, I tried to do it with, with nothing, and it didn't like it. And then I tried to leave it as HTTP and it didn't like it. Um, I could have sworn someone told me you can leave it empty now, but this is how I always did it myself anyway. Uh, pound sign, which is uh, trying to pretend like it's a link, but it doesn't actually go anywhere. And then link text is set to social media. And then now when I add it, I have a brand new item here, social media, where then I can move Twitter below it and move YouTube below it as well. And now I've got a top menu item, social media, that opens up to show Twitter and YouTube. Now the only thing here is be careful because you can easily put it like this. And now what you actually have is a sub item of a sub item. Oh. So now social media, you click on that, it opens up, it shows Twitter. And you click on Twitter and it opens up to show YouTube, which does not make sense. So technically you can have a sub item, watch this, a sub item of a sub item of a sub item. Now that doesn't make sense at all. But now you can have things inside of things inside of things. We only want to have something like this. So I have a home button, a shop button with a drop down, my account, a social media with two drop downs of Twitter and YouTube. And when you save that to view it, I have a brand new social media menu, hover over that, and then I've got the two networks. Now, for the moment, we will move away from the menus, but go back to your screen options and turn on product categories. This will be for a little bit later. Turn on product categories, and notice on the left side we have categories, which are actually related to the blog post. And then we have product categories, which are related to your product categories. So just turn on product categories at the top, and then we'll deal with that a little later. And now we've got a brand new menu where we have defined how our site looks. The, the catch is that if I create a brand new page or I create anything new, it will not add itself to the menu automatically anymore. Before we created our own menu, items would appear there automatically. But now that we've said, here's our menu, and here's the items in the menu, nothing new will be added. Unless you turn this on over here, automatically add new top-level pages. I wouldn't bother, however. I would not use that anyway, because most likely when I add a new page, I'm still going to decide where it goes. If you just leave this on and you create a brand new page, it'll add it at the end. 
which is might not be what I want. Maybe this brand new page I created, I want it to be a sub element of shop. So I'd have to come back here anyway to arrange it wherever I want. So I personally don't turn that on, but that's a good way to remember or to not forget uh, that you've added a new item and it'll add it for you. You'll probably be in the wrong place and you'll have to edit it anyway. Okay, so on our list over here, variable pro uh, categories, menus. Okay, let's look at coupons. Coupons is very easy. Um, you just have to kind of think logically what you want to do with it. So if we go over to WooCommerce section, let's go to coupons. WooCommerce coupons. at the bottom. Coupons are a great way to offer discounts and rewards to your customers. They will appear here once created. And then of course there's a button to go follow to read more documentation. I put uh, a link already to some of these some of this documentation back on back on um, module 6. So if you want to go back to that um, the the links for coupons and such. But anyway, the way we actually use them, let's click create our first coupon there. Coupon code, description, optional, and then some general info. So the coupon code is going to be the text, the name, the, the symbol that is your coupon. So you often see something like, let's say, save 10. So this is, the, this is the actual code that people would type into their shopping cart to give them the discount. And this can be anything at all that you want. Uh, I don't think the capitalization matters. We'll confirm that in a moment. But I'm putting save 10. Now, this is when you can decide, is this saving $10 or is it saving 10%? Because down here it says general discount type fixed cart discount versus percentage. Fixed cart is right here. This is going to be $10 free that you're giving your customer by using coupon code save10. Or if you meant it to be percentage, save 10%. You know, here's the, here's the dirty secret. All of this e-commerce stuff, we have to think about it in terms about how do we, the company, profit rather than the customer. So would it be more um, valuable, would it be better for a customer to get $10 free or 10%? That's what they're buying. Let's say they're buying a cookie for a dollar. $10 for free? I would love that as a customer. I get 10 cookies get for free. 10 cookies. Exactly. exactly. If we had 10% off of your $1 cookie, well, here's 10 cents that you've saved. So that's the point about figuring out what is a good value, yes, for the customer, but honestly, a little bit more for yourself as the company, because I've got this company that I don't want it to go bankrupt and I want it to make money and feed my family and so forth. So think about these things about deals and offers and are you really profiting from it? Are you giving too much away for free? Are you being too nice about it? And you have the ability to um, set them up right here, set them to expire, and plus other options. So expiry date. Let's say this coupon will only last until the end of the month. So if you didn't use it by the end of the month, that's another way that companies uh, profit off of this stuff. There was a, a big debacle, a big fiasco uh, about some product that was being sold a few months ago that they oversold it. Supposedly there were 10,000 to sell but supposedly 20,000 people bought it, so 10,000 people had to get their money back. Well, what the company did to say, oh, we're sorry, here's a coupon for whatever, but it expired in two weeks. So it was like, that wasn't even a very good answer to that. But here we have 10% or $10 or whatever you want, and it expires in X amount of time. Can I, how can you oversell something if you have an inventory and you plug into your website what your inventory is, 
How can it oversell something? In that instance, apparently there were two different systems that were not quite communicating with each other. One was the inventory system and one was the sales system, which you would think those should be perfectly meshed. But something was going on that one thing was showing. We have 20,000 to sell, but actually they had yeah, only 10,000. So in our case, we probably won't have to worry about that because if we put in our products and we put in the product has 10 of them, we have 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Technically, it has 10 on your website, but do you have 10 in your, in your warehouse? You know, that still has to connect somehow. And if it is something becomes unsynchronized, then you might have that you've got nine to sell, but you've got actually... Uh, listed on the site 10 or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so allow free shipping. If you've got shipping set up, do you want to give some sh some free shipping? So this is a couple of things I'll put here. And then when we look at usage restriction, minimum spend, maximum spend. Okay, so here's another way that companies use these enticements to their advantage. And again, I'm not putting it down or anything like that. I'm just saying think about it in terms about how can your company profit the most out of these deals. Uh, yes, coupons and such are a way to entice people to try. You know, it's all about like spend more to save more. That that you know psychological trick. Well, here if you want to use this 10% off, you have to spend at least ten dollars. So then you'll get a nice cool dollar off. Um, maximum well you'll get 10 percent, but not for the thing that you're spending 500 dollars on i don't want to give you 50 dollars for free so if you want you can set a range about how much this coupon will will work within how much they're buying well, is that also like even when it says free shipping if you spend 49 dollars or more that's so you do free shipping previously and then put the minimum as 49. yes exactly cool. you'll get some free shipping plus your savings when you spend at least 40 dollars yeah Mm -hmm. um, some of these are little bu little bubbles you can hover over to get a little bit more info individual use this is you cannot combine it with other coupons so again that's up to you to decide sales tax is it going to apply to sales tax or not and then you can be very specific to say you can only use this coupon for this product so once you've got products that exist you can start to add, what do we have in here anyway? Chocolate chip cookie. So once you've got products in here and you start typing, this 10% will only apply to the products that you list or the products you exclude and select that. Or categories, if you've put together a bunch of products, so 10% off the low sugar cookies that no one wants, here's 10% off of that. Now I have a question, yes. did you choose to do the um, specific products, will that automatically not let it, you don't have to say you have 100 products on your website mm -hmm. and you just want to have the coupon on a single product. If you just put it under the products of what to include, you don't have to then write all the ones to exclude, will it automatically exclude everything else? It's going to focus on the um, one right here. So it won't allow it to be used to the other products then. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So it says these are the products that need to be in the person's cart in order for this coupon to apply. Include categories, exclude categories, allow emails. Okay, so pretty advanced here. What about if you've got some sort of email uh, mailing list? What if you use MailChimp or Constant Contact or these other mailing list things? You can have people's email addresses set in here that um, this person gets this coupon and no one else. Even if someone else knows the coupon code and they try to use it, well, when they log in onto the system and it's not the right email, it won't allow them. So pretty powerful. And then usage limits. So I didn't make any changes. You, you don't have to. I'm just showing examples. And usage limits is usage limit per coupon or per user. So if I've got seven of these, you got to be the f one of the first seven to use the coupon. And then number eight, sorry, no more coupon. So we have a limit per coupon or a per user. So what's the difference here? How many times this coupon can be used by an individual user? Okay, so this one is um, they, um, they got the coupon saved 10 and they bought it this week and next week and next week and next week or just limit it to being able to do it once. Yes. So I've seen in situations and when they say with the purchase of this amount of money, you'll be able to get like this free sample or this free mm -hmm. item. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? 
Hmm, that one's a little bit more advanced than what this is right here, but that would be related to something we're going to look at in a moment regarding linked products, more types of advanced products. So um, WooCommerce does give you that capability, but sometimes a very specific capability might be an extra plugin. So we'll look into that to see what we can find with it. But I'm like 99% sure you, you can do it in WooCommerce. We just have to see where we do that. Okay, so, uh, oh, description, I never filled that in, but that's that's a place for you to write in some detail about what's this about. So give a customer 10% uh, or $10 off of a certain product. The, you, you only see this yourself um, behind the scenes, so when you've got 10 coupons to manage, you know, after I click publish, I will see the list of all of them right here, coupons. So after you save it and publish it, and then you go back to coupons, you will see here. Because once I once if I only see them like this, I, I don't remember what it is when I make ten of them. But then when I have listed over here, this is the uh, this is what it is. Usage limit. When does it expire? It's an amount of ten. It's a fixed dollar amount. It's a Okay, um, let's uh, take our first break here. If um, oh, well, uh, one last thing. If you wanted to see this in action, when you've got an item in your cart, view cart, there's a spot right there, coupon code. So if I plug it in, save 10. It's uh, making the product pretty much free because I'm giving them $10 minus the $1 of what they were trying to buy chocolate chip cookie. So this happens right there, just like any shopping cart. Once products are in your cart and you go to the visit cart, you've got a box here, add the coupon, and it applies it there, remove coupon, etc. Okay, so let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about variable products, more advanced types of products. It's uh, 151. We'll be back at... Uh, 201 ish if um, if you need a little help let's figure that out we'll be back in 10 minutes <laughs> 